coming to you live from Jefferson's National Forest. We're coming to them live. Live. We are alive. <laughs> Jefferson <laughs> National Forest. <laughs> this isn't live at all. But we are, as I said, alive. Oh, alive. Alive. <laughs> at Jefferson, we are alive. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dan. And I'm Jenny. We ditched the corporate world to spend a year exploring. And our goal is to get out and see all the incredible places and meet interesting people. And maybe find a place to put roots down. So join us as we explore both on and off the beaten path. Sometimes we'll be somewhere. And sometimes nowhere. On this episode of Somewhere Yet Nowhere, the plan is to travel north and hit Linville Gorge, George Washington and Jefferson National Forest, as well as take a drive through the Shenandoah before circling back to Charlotte. We'll take you on a couple hikes that we'd recommend, as well as bring you a bit of U.S. history. Enjoy! While we would be discovering new areas later in the trip, our first stop was well known to us. Linville Gorge is filled with opportunity for overlanding, hiking, and backpacking. The gorge itself is bisected by the Linville River and drops more than 2,000 feet in some places. Running along the west side of the gorge is Old North Carolina 105, a road frequented by overlanders, campers, and is where we would set up for the night. Dan cooking food. After a restful night, we were up and pointed northeast to Virginia. Before we did, however, we took a quick detour to Wiseman's View. While it would be a vast overstatement to call this a hike, this two-tenths of a mile excursion takes you to one of the best views in North Carolina. This perch sits 1,500 feet above the river, and when on it, you can look south all the way into the gorge and east across to Hawksville and Table Rock Mountains. If you go to Wiseman's, try to be there first thing in the morning, as the exceptional views make this extremely popular. From Wiseman's, it was on to Virginia. After hitting dirt, we took some time to find just the perfect site that would be nice and quiet for the evening and set us up to be in Shenandoah early the next morning.
Oh, perfect. This is it. I think this works. Done. Property. No snakes, right? What's that? No snakes, right? Nah, there's no snakes around here. First is perfect. Yeah, this works. Okay. Once you start gathering some wood. Why would I gather wood? Uh, because you want coals so that you can have a fire. So For the that chicken. I can cook chicken. It looks level to me. It would, but it's not. Okay, fine. I gotta level it. Whatever. What are you doing, Dan? Well, gotta rebuild this fireplace if we want to cook on it tonight. So was not set up for a grill grate. Because what are we having for dinner tonight? Jenny's favorite chicken. And Dan's. No, I do love it too. It's so quiet. So With the sounds of the forest changing from night to day, we packed up and pushed out. As we wound round the gentle curves, with split rail fences and fog draped trees, it was easy to let the imagination go back in time. These were the roads and fields where this country was put to the ultimate test, and it felt as if everything had a soul. It is rocky. It is. Well, it's the AT. It's a lot of footprints. Appalachian Trail. I just follow Dan. And he protects me from snakes, right Dan? That's right. So Jenny, what's the loop you have us on today? The Little Stony Man Trail via the Appalachian Trail. It's a loop. I don't think I like how uh, the trail just keeps going down. <laughs> I know. It means we're going back up. <laughs> how many rocks do you think are on this trail, Dan? I've counted eight so far. I counted 18,000. <laughs> <laughs> I 
if I knock on that, you think Bilbo Baggins will come out? Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure who that is, but yes. Oh. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Dan. Do you hear those drums? No, what's that? What is that? <laughs> I think you've earned your Tapo Chico. Do you have one in your bag? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Oh, a little overcast. After finishing the hike, we set course for our spot for the night, a picturesque hip camp location that was nestled alongside a pond and a horse farm. That evening and next morning, we would be greeted with the same soulful fog as we started the day. Oh, the pileated? Yep. They're so cool. Hash browns, extra crispers. Yes, please. Thank you, Dan. Mm hmm Where are we going today, Dan? We are going to explore in the footsteps of the Civil War for a little bit. Do you generally know where we're going? I generally have a feel for where we're going to go, yeah. And it'll be neat to go walk, be in the exact footstep at the same places that these decisions were made and these generals did what they did. Can we go to the mall afterwards? Yeah, then we're gonna go to a two o'clock. <laughs> Maybe we can do a glamour shot together. Yep, yeah, we can do a glamour shot or like those old west photos. Oh my gosh, we can do that. So we're gonna go see really good Civil War sites and go to the mall. Especially the mall. You heard it here first. Dan is excited about going to Civil War and the mall. And. Mm, Dan, that looks so good. Yep, extra crispy for Jenny. Ooh, nice go. presentation, mm -hmm. chef. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome, Jenny, enjoy. I can't wait to go to the Civil War and then the mall. Mm-hmm, then the mall. <laughs> So we are, we have found the dirt. We are traveling along Stonewall Jackson's flanking maneuver. It's wild to think about all the history that happened because of this move. So many critical things that happened in this battle that, that are what ifs. What ifs if Hooker had pressed the line? What ifs if, as Jackson was moving along this line, the Union picked up that he was here and Hooker thought he's retreating. If he had actually attacked him, would he have stopped 
this flanking maneuver that turned the battle into a rout. And then this is, of course, the battle that Jackson is wounded by his own man and falls. So there's a what if if he didn't go out and get shot as it relates to this battle. But then the next major campaign after this was Gettysburg. There's a lot of speculation. What would what would have been different in Gettysburg if Stonewall Jackson had been alive? So I don't know. It's sort of neat sort of driving these roads saying, God, that, you know, the decisions those people were making and they were standing right here. And I never paid attention in school, so I'm learning a lot from you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, I don't know. History is kind of built over time, but then you start reading about American history and what a, what a significant impact the Civil War had on us as a, as a country. Yep. So. America. America. up camp for the night. We are in Jefferson National Forest. You're up on it. Well, that was fun, Dan. <laughs> so, so how was last night's spotty shower? Um, it was the spotty shower just stopped, and it is still going. <laughs> so, what we saw on the radar as about a 45 minute to an hour spot shower turned into all night downpour. Downpour. <laughs> but positive is the Ursa Minor did an awesome job. Yeah, Our that's tent right. rocked. I was actually super surprised. We were dry all night. That was awesome. What wasn't good was that the bourbon and the Bacardi did not let us, lead us to bring our stuff underneath our bat wing. No, they led us in a different direction. Yeah, so everything is soaked in the Which back of the Jeep. Which was party time. Yeah, it was, par <laughs> it, was party, it was party time. Everything is soaked back in the Jeep and I can't breathe. That's right. <laughs> So, I think that'll end this episode. Yes, we are now going home to dry out everything. <laughs> <laughs> we need an industrial sized dryer. Yes, yes we do. And get dry for, <laughs> for the next adventure. Well, thanks everybody for joining <laughs> us and uh, we'll see you next time somewhere or nowhere. <laughs>